Governor of Zamfara State, Bailo Matawale, defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressive Congress, APC, in June 2021, leaving behind his deputy governor in the PDP. Since then, the PDP has insisted by the reason of his defection that the governor should vacate his office and that the deputy governor should take his place. They have backed this demand with a court action to enforce same. However, the publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Kola Olobudio, has called on the deputy governor to forcefully take over the seat of the governor. In the press release, he berated the Nigeria police for resisting the violent and forceful attempt by the deputy governor to take over the seat. Well, joining us to discuss this is Diron Odeyemi. He is the deputy publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party and James Ibo, who is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Plus TV. Okay, great. I'm going to start with you, James, because, of course, this is a legal matter and everybody's wondering um, how this is supposedly to play out. Um, but you have obviously have assessed this issue. Why do you think the PDP is so insistent on um, Matawale vacating his seat? Honestly, honestly, I had reviewed the press statement and it is very strange. And uh, it shows desperation on the part of PDP because um, the position they are pushing is, uh, is not just illegal, it is criminal. Because the constitution is very clear about taking um, over the post of uh, the governor of any state in Nigeria. And I wonder why the PDP as a party will approve such and um, very flagrant dis um, disregard to our constitution by even advising or urging the deputy governor to take over office forcefully. It is strange, it is desperate, and very unfortunate. I actually will, will call um, itself to order because they cannot, at the stage of our constitutional democracy, begin to you know, advise on a forceful taking over uh, of, um, of office. And I must also commend the Nigerian police force for refusing to take that illegal order. Let me, let, me, let me ask about a debate, and I, I hope that we can get Daryl back on so we can ask him the same question. The debate about who um, is voted into power, is it the party, is it the person who's uh, the flag bearer? Because this has been a debate that's gone on for so long. Um, I mean, and we know that during elections, what you see on the ballot paper is the logo of the political party and not the person's face. So really, on this basis, the PDP does have an argument, don't they? It's the party's platform that brought Belo Matawale into, you know, and, and we know the circumstances that surrounded um, Governor Matawale becoming governor um, because of the disqualification of the APC. So on this basis, looking at it from a legal perspective and not in a, a political perspective, sh does the PDP not have some form of, um, do they not have a reason to go to court on this matter? Yeah, I think I think the, the PDP has a moral debate or argument, but not a legal argument. Uh, the reason is far is very clear. If you look at uh, um, it's it's also the same position when you are talking about uh, PDP in Cross River State and APC. Governor Benedict Ayade um, uh, became a governor under the platform of um, PDP. Remember, it is not in contention that it is the political parties that is the vehicle to ascending to the office of the governor or president. But that notwithstanding, the constitution is very clear. In fact, section 180 and uh, 188 and 189, the combined effect of these provisions of the law clearly states on the procedure for ceasing to be a governor or a president. The modus, the, the process, is very clear unambiguously and this has also further been confirmed by the supreme court i, I remember i think precisely that was when article defected to um ac ac and then um, there was this running battle between the president because article was looking for a platform to challenge his boss in the polls and he defected to ac and then um, the, the the president declared his position vacant and it was a, a legal um, issue that uh, went up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court clearly says, then on again, that 
it is not known to law that the fact of defection will make you to lose the position you're already occupying, either as president or vice president. Uh -huh. So in as much as I agree that, yes, the position is that of the party, but defecting to another party, um, it, it is sad. It's unfortunate. The constitution never may be... Con I think the constitution even contemplated it because if you look at section 68 and section 109 of the constitution, it makes reference to National Assembly, the Legislative House of the National Assembly, or the state houses of assembly. And it was very expressed that if you, if you defect, you lose your seat. Unless you can show that there is a split in your own part, political party. Mm -hmm. So I think it may not even be correct to say the constitution it, is a lacuna. It is not. It is the intention of the constitution that that provisions only apply to legislative houses of either the National Assembly or that of the state, okay. not for governors. Okay, let me go to Duran. Um, Mr. Mr. Deyemi, you, you obviously, uh, I think we have talked about this briefly when uh, Governor Matawale initially defected. But then the message that your um, that the, Mr. Kola Lobodino had put out uh, asking the deputy to take over, isn't that uh, an illegal you know, statement again you have a case that you say you want to take to court and you're going to pursue it to the highest court. But asking that a deputy governor forcefully take over the seat of a governor, isn't that a call for anarchy or trouble in a state? I'm not sure you have uh, the statement made by Kola Olomodio. Oh, I did look at it. If you have the statement, this question will not arise. Simply because was. Kola did not make such a statement at all. And there is nothing bad if the governor decides to join another political party and the deputy governor decides to stay with the party. And what we are saying as a political party is that since the deputy refuses to go with the governor, then the automatically the deputy governor becomes the leader of the party and he should take over the affairs of PDP. Nothing more than that. If I you have anything contrary, that is, if you think what Kola has done is to call for crisis in uh, uh, San Francisco State, I think what they should do is just to call the police or you know, to take him to court. So, so, again, I'm repeating it. If you have the statement of what Kola made, it's not about the deputy governor taking over the administration of San Francisco State. Let's talk about the... Um well, the court also uh, has, one way or the other, stopped the impeachment of the deputy governor, uh, which a lot of pund political pundits had seen coming. In fact, people predicted that uh, in no time the deputy governor may be impeached. And, of course, it also stopped some members who are still with the PDP in the House of Assembly from being impeached. So I'd like to ask you as a party man... Why is it so difficult or why is it becoming a norm that if a governor of a state decides to move to one party, every, every person, whether uh, members of his executive, even the House of Assembly is forced to, you know, change to that party. And then there's never really room for the opposition, no matter how minority, uh, how, how many, uh, how, many how, how small the in number they are, there's always that problem of wanting to impeach them. Uh, what does the party manifesto say about that, or the party constitution, I beg your pardon, say about, um, you know, coexisting as parties, you know, in a state, no matter how small in number the opposition is? Why is there that forceful nature of wanting to get everybody to one side? San Francisco case is a very complex and difficult one. And it's in fact a special case, which is why PDP decided to test the matter in the Supreme Court. If, if the situation is, if the court awards the position to PDP and agreed that as at the time it was given to PDP, APC was not in existence. That is, APC did not contest that election at all. So if the uh, Matawale now decided to take that, uh, that mandate to another political party, what we are saying is there is no political party for him to take it to because they were not in that election. And don't forget, we have a legal department in PDP that looks into this and advise that, yes, we have a solid case with, you know, to, to contest with. Now, having said that, 
it is a difficult thing if the House of Assembly now decides to impeach, to impeach the deputy governor simply because he refused to follow Matawali to APC. Very, very difficult. And the best thing a responsible party will do is to contact the court. Okay. That can this be done? And since the court has ruled that he has, they have, the House of Assembly cannot impeach him. So it is. That is the situation. Okay. Forget about the political aspect of it, but talk about the moral aspect of it. Hmm. Is it compulsory that everybody must follow you to APC? So, no. Uh, talking about the morality of it, why is there so much pressure on the governor? But then the same, why is the same amount of pressure not mounted on, on the members of uh, the House of Assembly where the constitution actually does apply? You see, the, the, the issue is, before you can impeach the deputy governor, you must out your reason. You cannot impeach the deputy governor simply because he refused to follow the governor to another political party. And that is the grounds. And that is the issue here. If, if, the, if the House of Assembly decides to impeach him, there's no problem about that. But there must be concrete offense or allegations against him, not based on political situation that is yet to be resolved at the Supreme Court. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time because I would like to pressure you more on what the PDP plans are in the future. Because if the PDP does not win in court uh, over this matter, what will be your next line of action? We are, our next line of action is to take Matawari to court, which we have done already as a political party. And if you do so not we, win? Yeah, it is, it is either we let the court decide. Okay. And that is why, because... People don't know their rights in this country. If they know their rights, there are situations whereby you put everything before the judge for them to decide whether it is right or wrong. And that is exactly what we are doing as a, as a reasonable political party. We don't have to resort to uh, other means other than to go to, to, to the judiciary. Okay. Well, Dural Dayemi is the Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. James Ibor is a legal practitioner. And I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We have to go now. Thank you very thank much you. for all the right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, I will give you my take. It's going to be really short. Stay with us. Here's my take. As a member of the fourth estate of the realm in this country, our duty is very it's simple, it's straightforward. We are supposed to put our leaders on their toes we're supposed to report without fear of favor. We should not be oppressed in any way. And of course, come on, if, if, if we're, we live in a country where we're asking that we have freedom of the press or we're asking that the press be unbiased, give them freedom to report and let them give them access to information. We ask questions and some, some answers never get given to us. We never get those answers. Uh, we, we go to the army for figures. I remember in 20, 2018, 2017, the numbers that were coming from the army was totally different from the numbers. I mean, it was just a misinformation galore. Allow us to do our jobs, NBC. Please let us do our jobs. Dear government, allow the media to do its job. If we have good stories to report, we will report them. If the government does great, we will report it. If something bad is going on, we will report it. There has to be reportage one way or the other. We will play down on the sentiments of trying to make the terrorists look bad, but let us do our job. We're saying no to gag orders. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching.